Ah, this beautiful fountain and water slide provide the focal point for today's project. Hi, I'm Gary Allen, and our goal today is to take this focal point and enhance the beauty around it with a tropical designer's landscape. Now, every good design or plan really should incorporate what the homeowner needs and desires, as well as, well, how we can improve or make things easier for them. Uh, as we continue around the property, you'll see there are plenty of kids here. It's a dog family, too, as far as having a pet, so we see some holes being dug. How can we make this look better? Remember, our theme is tropical. We're going to come in with some cabbage palms and place them in the corner. A triangle of three in staggered heights will light them at night and we want to enhance this pool area from the inside screen enclosure for daytime viewing as well as nighttime viewing. I also see the need to eliminate some of the hard to mow areas around the pad here into the door along the screened enclosure where edging and trimming is a problem and endangers the life of the screen itself. Along the fence posts here all this constant weed trimming or string trimming uh, it's a lot of extra work. I see a meandering bed lines that kind of complement each other. We'll probably end the sod here and begin it again as we turn the corner. Our layout is really pretty simple, uh, pretty basic in shape, and that is we have a rectangular lot with fenced with a rectangular pool and an enclosure. What that leaves us is about a 10-foot swath of a green belt sod now that wraps the pool. So. Our goal is to provide focals as well as this eliminating some of the hard to mow areas. Our beds can't be too large because we want to have enough width of sod here for it to make sense. But I do see complementary beds that kind of work together. Some focals that we can light at night as well. And behind you is the children's play area. And boy, a lot of high maintenance there. Let's begin there to kind of save some mowing, if you will. When I walk into an area like this, uh, the maintenance, it just, uh, how would you like to mow around all these poles and this uh, swing set or play area? Woo, a lot of work. I mean, I get tired just seeing all the corners and the squares and the things to go around. Well, the string trimmer is at the opposite end of the property from this back left corner of the property here. So uh, the homeowner doesn't bring it around as often. How can we make things easier for him to mow well, I, I think we actually start in the corner here where the gas tanks are. You see that extra grass there? Let's do away with it first. I, when I see uh, this extra sod and having to mow around this other corner, around these tanks, I don't really get it. We can save much time here every week. And with the pad or patio, I just want to use a nice smooth radius that'll be easy to mow. And I'm going to head toward our play area and line this up with the straight board here. Now, we'll leave turf grass in this curve and we will now eliminate the mowing underneath here. You see, nobody goes here. So why do we need turf? That, that's where we can use mulch and you won't have to string trim all these areas. I'll draw the back side of this bed in a moment. But basically what we're saying is that when you come down the slide, instead of hitting this little 18 inch pad of turf, will be in the mulch. Okay, that's all right. We'll come along here, straight along this board, and I think it's fair to say that uh, we really should keep the turf grass underneath the swings, at least, don't you think so? But as I turn the corner, I see another high maintenance area between the ladder up. Now again, the kids are only gonna be on this side of the ladder. So let's eliminate the sod underneath, and this other corner, and this pole, and mowing in between here by just coming right up to the edge of the step, the outside edge of the step ladder, and then look at this corner. Let's, let's kind of join these two together so that when you're mowing, uh, you see the new pattern? You'll come straight down along this board. You'll come right along this line. Oop, let me connect the dots here, and you'll keep going. 
Now again, we're okay to straighten off here. Here's where I'll draw the back side of the additional ladder and the slide that'll be in molts. And you look down here, not a very utilized piece of the property, but even with the crepe myrtles, we've got a lot of busyness there. Uh, we wanna maybe relocate the crepe myrtles to a part of the house that they're viewed more often, maybe even decorating part in here. And uh, uh, the big point of concern is that for the homeowner's sake, we are making the regular maintenance of mowing much simpler in this part of the yard. To repeat or really introduce the tropical theme, we'll put some palm trees out here as well. You see the existing bed that has been installed. It kind of ends rather abruptly with a 90 degree turn. Uh, the unique thing about the property here uh, is that the driveway kind of goes right through the center. So you've almost got two equidistant lawn areas. This one, however, is a little bit larger. So we're going to have a bed that lines up along the driveway. Now we won't do that on both sides. But here, to include the mailbox and out at the street, we want a nice little curved bed that comes in here and joins up with this existing mark. We'll also fine tune that a little bit, but this is where we're thinking about a cluster of palms as well and repeating some on the other side of the driveway to kind of theme it out again, if you will. This appears to be a pretty large bed, but with the size of the lawn, I think it's gonna be just fine. Uh, the homeowner is allergic to the pollen from the live oak trees. And these two, there's one on both sides, they get removed. So give us a while to get the beds cleaned out. I think when you see that new change, uh, you're gonna like the way things are shaping up. Let the color commence and the planting begin. I just can't wait to show you some of the things we've been accomplishing plant material that has arrived. We, again, our theme is kind of tropical, so we want to remember that. Look how things have shaped up getting the unwanted grass removed. We've really got some bed lines that are uh, opening up to the yard. Yesterday we installed these palm trees, the sable palm, and um, originally I had the conception of putting them and framing them on the outside of the house, but now, uh, since the river birch trees were there, we brought them into the driveway, and it's really going to provide like a well, a gate, if you will, to kind of uh, enhance the entrance and this long stretch of, of concrete. We've got landscape lighting going in and we get to talk about that as well. But uh, also some specimen trees that we'll be installing. Again, uh, just having the bed lines cleaned out and the unwanted grass or turf removed, it's really opened things up and the first phase of our landscape plan has come together. You see the trees, the plants in the background, uh, this colorful combination is really going to pay off for an investment for the homeowners. Now, the guy saved me one small area of turf grass to remove. And let me show you how we do that. You see, friends, uh, if we can save you time and efforts in your landscape reconstruction project, we'd want to. People ask me over and over again, should I rototill my yard and till it up? Well, in that case, you're taking your turf grass that you don't want and you're cutting it into thousands of pieces and then you have to grade that out, rake it, haul it off, and then you still have to grade the property. So the sod cutter, these are found at rental uh, places. Every golf course has them because they utilize this to cut and renovate uh, golf course turf grass itself. This is a junior sod cutter. We've got about an 18 inch width or path that we're going to uh, take the sod out and this bottom blade it vibrates backwards and forwards to undermine the root system of the turf grass or weeds or whatever you want to cut out. Now I can also adjust the depth of my cut. If I have a very shallow system, I can just strip off the top. In this case, we're kind of edging or cleaning out the bed. So I'll raise the bar here and uh, drop it to, well, what we'll consider to be a pretty, a pretty deep cut, all right? Now, one thing neat about the sod cutter too is that it edges and cleans the outside edge as it removes the turf. I've got an on and off switch here. We're in good shape. Let me fire this guy up and we'll show you how easy it is to operate.
Okay, let me show you what, what we've done. One thing I want to impress upon you is that machine weighs uh, about 270 pounds. That's a little more than me. I was letting it do the work. But I talked about the way it cleans something out. You come in now and look how this is just, it can be reused. In this case, we won't, but we got a nice smooth cut. And look at the edge line. I edged the bed as I cut. And now we just kind of remove this. So since we're talking about turf and turf grass, this lawn really needs a little extra help too. There's one practice that we really need to consider and that's aeration. It's very important for turf roots or any roots to really have oxygen or air. And this piece of equipment, friends, uh, like the sod cutter, you wouldn't necessarily invest in them, but the rental equipment places have them. So prior to fertilizing, you might want to think in those compacted areas, like we have here, see the bobcat that we use to plant the palm trees in the back. It kind of uh, left some tracks, so we're going to lift up and aerate that. This machine is automated. And that makes it easy and fun to use, basically. And these tines do the work. We'll, take the, we'll pull the wheels up with this handle, and the tines are depressed down into the lawn or the turf grass, and they actually core as they go around, pulling out cores and depressing into the turf uh, air holes, if you will. Now, there's a big black wheel on the front of here. You can fill water into there, which weighs about eight and a half pounds per gallon, and that pushes the, the tines deeper into the soil to get that good aeration. I'll crank this up and really go around the back side and show you just how we use it. You know, I think it's important to have fun if you can mix it with all the hard work. And when it comes to the colorful part with the flowers, it really makes it enjoyable. Here we have a beautiful daylily. And um, this is Stella d'Oro. It's a miniature. You can tell by the size of the leaf and the flower. But also one thing to note about it, it's an early bloomer. You see daylilies, some come early, mid-spring or early summer, and then into the summer months, depending on what zone you might live in across the country. But the Stella d'Oro is one that we can depend on, again, for this beautiful, bright, uh, brilliant yellow gold, if you will. And as well as we have some juniper, the Laura Petalum, Indian Hawthorn, Lavender Lantana, Nandina, so many other varieties. We can only spend time on talking about a few. So I want to feature the Stella d'Oro and then introduce another patented plant to you. Now, you may be familiar with uh, Pittosporum, which is actually pronounced Pittosporum tobira. It is a large growing shrub and there's a variegated variety also. Well, rather than the big tall guys, I want to introduce to you one that's been around for a little bit. This is a dwarf called Wheeler's Dwarf Pittosporum or Pittosporum. And uh, we can depend on this nice green color, but only a couple feet in overall height. This is our new addition, or relatively new to the landscape, is a patented variety of the variegated called Laura Lee. Isn't that a beautiful, low, compact dwarf shrub? Now, as you look at the specs on here again, we can depend on this plant to stay low or dwarf in nature. And that, friends, is what we call low maintenance because we won't have to prune or clip this continually. It'll just basically sit in the, in the ground and do its thing in a low nature for the long haul. That makes it a good, low maintenance plant for the landscape. So we'll put those to work. Along with enjoying the pool and the fountain, the homeowners are beginning to like the way things are shaping up. And really, with the installation of the palm trees here, uh, come on in closer and let's talk about bed design and layout. We eliminated the grass in this corner altogether. We've got a radius of it winding around going back to you and a curved pad here going that way. And here's the deal, we knew we were gonna plant this corner uh, really heavily. So do you notice we've got two palms pressed to the back and we've taken this third palm, instead of placing it right right here, we've pulled it closer to the screened enclosure. So, uh, to allow for our traffic, we've got to get around from one part of the, uh, the residence to the next, even for maintenance. And with this uh, cordyline terminalis, a little Thai plant here, isn't that a beautiful color? Now that is tropical and it's a little marginal for this uh, part of the state, but we're gonna go with it. 
And what I want to do is really come in with now something nice and green and glossy and follow that radius. And then I need something close to the enclosure here, but I also want to leave enough space for the traffic, if you will, for a wheelbarrow, for working through this area. You see the night lights, landscape lighting already installed there. And here are some choices of plant textures and colors. Uh, I think along the tie plant, this green pit, the dwarf pit, will look really good. I've got that gold, that yellow gold of the daylily. And look at the blue-green color that the Nandina has. You know, when you compare it here to the green-green, it's a nice blue-green color. And then texture, uh, the, the Aztec grass is really kind of tropical in nature. What a difference a few plants make. The daylily, Stella Diora on the inside that's low and colorful, and then the green pit, the wheeler eye with the tie plant, really our completion here. And we've left a nice, easy, wide enough path, well for maintenance, as well as just for traffic that'll get us from one part of the property around this corner of the screen enclosure. Now we get to show you more as the before and afters come to life here soon. But for now, let's go look at the progress being made in the front yard. We begin back at the mailbox. I like to install a, a patio tree here. The East Palatka Holly is going to be uh, year-round, provide the green. See, the river birch basically will lose their foliage and all during the winter. So we've placed some East Palatka Hollies to provide a green leaf and presentation even in the winter months. You remember this bed line? It seemed like just moments ago I was drawing the curve. We've cleaned it out, placed our plants in here, low maintenance with color, and now all we have do, to do left is to mulch that. Behind me, we're left with a circle where we had our old live oak. Uh, we picked that up, filled it in, and so we'll come back with a little patch of sod or turf there. I really like the way the curves are shaping up. And also, we've installed landscape lighting. Uh, Guy, tell us really for this project, uh, what goals and what are we trying to achieve here with lighting? Uh, well, uh, in the backyard, what we're trying to achieve is two elements, two things. One is prettiness, ser serenity, enjoyment for the homeowner. Sure. Plus security. Okay. So what we did was we mixed the two together. You know, with the, you know, according to the landscape plan and the landscaping you guys did. Yeah. Now, I guess the palm trees with our tropical theme are, are part of that landscape. Oh, absolutely. To me, to me, the three palms, the, like, the trinity, if you want to call it, uh, come out the prettiest at night. Not only when once the palms start opening up with the with the palms. Oh yeah, itself, they'll get heads on them. They'll look beautiful, and, and it's it's right in the center of the the, the backyard, and it, it not only will create the prettiness for the for the homeowner, but security. It'll be, it will be well lit back here without any extra lights hitting you in the eyes yeah. and stuff like so that. So what you're saying is uh, if someone was walking around here at night, uh, you'd really be able to see them. Oh, you, like as if it was daytime. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I guess balance is also important even in landscape lighting. In landscape lighting, lighting yeah, you, could, you probably could get by with just the three palms. Uh -huh. But you would have some dark spots on one side and dark spots on the other. So you've given us a little outside edge. That's right. We lit this side as well as this light, again, for the beauty of it mm -hmm. and, two, for the security. Yeah. We've so got that, some extra trees that, that we're paying planted, attention that, to. That's right. And, Super. And they'll look pretty as they grow up tall. Okay. So what about the front? Anything different out there, really? Well, the front, we did it a little bit different. Uh, in the front, the architecture of the home is so pretty, the different peaks and the prettiness of the, the way you landscaped it with the palms and everything. We, didn't we don't like to light every little nook and cranny, but okay. we wanted the house to jump out. Okay. 
So it, not only the palms are going to be lit, when you're driving home, you come up the driveway, you're going to be able to pick out your house, but the prettiness of the architect value. Yes. To give it that, like I said, it's like a three-dimensional look, which gives it, you know, the prettiness. Yeah. You know. Super. Uh, I want to thank you for a job well done. My pleasure. And uh, again, having you out here, I know the homeowners as well as the neighbors are going to enjoy this. Oh, they will. And they'll see a big difference with the type of lights we use. Very good. Let's take a moment and talk about some basic design principles or concepts really dealing with balance. There's a couple of ways to balance things visually, and that is symmetrically, one on the left and one on the right. And as we do it on the designer's landscape, asymmetrically. So we use triangles to balance things out. And really, I was thinking about the Japanese plum tree and the Thai plant. Underneath it, the beautiful uh, magenta color. We put some over there on the right, some here centrally located. I mean, uh, here close to you, and some in the back center. Well, what that does, again, since that plant kind of just jumps out at you, we have that asymmetrical balance through the backyard. Now, we've also achieved that with the Japanese plum trees, too. And then if we move to the Stella Diora daylilies, the gold, we have some here, some in the center up close, and some balanced on the other side. So I kind of want to draw that impression. Think about balancing uh, your annuals, your ground cover, and your color in ways that asymmetrically pull things together also, as well as this theme kind of goes with the fact that we used three cabbage palms here in the back corner also. Uh, the cabbage palm, sable palmetto that we've used here is not so tropical in nature, morely subtropical. It'll go up the, uh, the coast to plant climate zones of say, six or seven, but it is tough and sturdy and will take the winters here in the North Florida area where we are. Now, one thing we want to note is that uh, the cabbage palm or palms are in the Poaceae family. That's the grass family. So as you look up, you'll see the stem or the bud is the only part, living part of the plant. The neat thing about the cabbage palms are that they can be planted or installed deep. In other words, if we had three trees here that are the same size and we ran into this little uh, situation out front, uh, we can install this tree uh, deeper to make for our staggered height, if you will, to give it a nice triangle. So when these things develop their heads, uh, they'll be, uh, have an alternate size, if you will, height-wise. Another thing to note, is that most all the fronds have been taken off of these trees. They've come up really with a new method called hurricaning. And uh, this hurricaning method is used for several reasons. One is to provide the tree with less foliage during its transplant period. See, plants or trees dry out, even palms, through their foliage, through their leaves. So when you're digging or transplanting, if you minimize the leaves or the dry out potential of that plant, it has a better survival rate. And also, if the head was full, the wind could whip and actually tear up that bud, like we mentioned, and cause the tree to, to die also. What we're looking for is new growth to spread out and this new head to develop with the next six to nine months. Another fun project completed. We certainly hope you've enjoyed it as well. For the Designer's Landscape, I'm Gary Allen. I'll see you soon.